Anyway, um, I, I think I know what is in this case. Um, I could actually be wrong, so I'm going to take a chance, and I genuinely don't know if I'm right about what's in this drum, uh, in this case, but as a bit of fun, I'm going to, um, well, we'll see what's in here, shall we? Um, uh, actually, as a quick sideline, there you go. Um, I actually, this was Thomas Lang's case, it was his hard case. Um, when Thomas Lang, uh, Thomas Lang used to live in North London and he's uh, a good friend of Mike Dolbez. And when Thomas moved to uh, LA in uh, probably, I don't know when it was, maybe five or six years ago, uh, basically he left all of his symbols and a whole load of other stuff as well behind and basically uh, left Mike to sell some bits for him. So. Um, uh, uh, off a tangent, obviously, um, I got this case, and I actually bought a whole load of uh, Thomas's old symbols as well. Um, I had some hi hats which he drilled, sort of uh, uh, probably like nickel size, five p sized um, holes in in one of the symbols, the bottom one. And I bought some of his old crashes and a ride to a Byzance ride, and the hi hats with Byzance, and. Um, I uh, I just can never get on with them, and I thought, you know what, I'm never going to buy more mine or symbols, so I'll just basically I'll just flog the lot. And uh, <laughs> of course, actually going back to what I said at the end of the um, the uh, 400 video about never selling stuff, and or if you do sell stuff, then you end up possibly regretting it. Um, I I don't regret selling those symbols. Um, I don't regret selling the crashes anyway because they were some of those kinetic ones, which were the the weird looking, electronic sounding things. Uh, but I really I probably should have kept hold of the hi hats and the ride. So stupid move number two on my part. I'm confessing all. Um, but anyway, I also got one of this case. Now this is actually a 12 inch case. Um, which means I'm hoping, it's a 12 inch snare case, so I am hoping the drum that uh, I think is in here is in fact in here. Um, if it's not then I'm going to be talking about something else. Um, but um, I like 12 inch snare drums and uh, I, I, there was two reasons why I, I liked uh, 12 inch snare drums and why I have uh, probably what could be equated to quite a few 12 inch snare drums and uh, a, a, at least half of them are 12 by 7 as well and it's it's quite simply this I like the sound and the dimension of uh, you know a 12 inch uh, a 12 inch head gives you quite a sort of a high pitch a uh, bit of a pop uh, which you can still use as a uh, a main snare sna main snare sound and the seven inch depth gives you a little bit more body to it. And the other reason is, uh, it's quite simply because when I was ordering a drum uh, from like Ron Danette or, well actually it was mainly Ron actually, funny enough, um, I, uh, they're cheaper, they see. <laughs> it's that simple, they're just cheaper. So I'd be able to save a little bit of money. I'd be able to be able to get a drum that I wanted built uh, to the specs that I wanted, but it would be a little bit cheaper. But anyway, I'm hoping I had a switch around some time ago, uh, and, I, and I and I moved a couple of drums around in cases. And the drum that I'm hoping this one is used to be, well, it actually used to be in, in this case. And as I just found out, it's not. So hopefully, it's not. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk about this drum instead. <laughs> okay, yeah, this this is not a Rondonets one of Rondonets drums, um, and it is in fact uh, covered in bits of case glue. Right, anyway. Uh, well, funnily enough, this is a 12 by 7 This is actually, um, right, this is probably one of the first custom drums that I 
um, I actually got, and uh, and it was actually made for me as well. And I, you know, I, actually, I tell you what, I'm I'm kind of glad that I I got this one out. Um, this is uh, it's it's KD. There you go. So you can have a, a good look at that. KD. Now, I, I, I do know when I got this drum. Um, this was uh, 2004. There was uh, what, is, what was the predecessor to the uh, National Drum Fair uh, was something uh, up in, I think it was Warwickshire, or actually or just outside of Warwick in the middle of England, if you're not in England. And uh, excuse me, it was um, much much smaller scale. Uh, whilst I had been writing for MikeDelvey.com since August 2002, I think this was the first time uh, I sort of gone along to a trade show to uh, you know review some drums. And um, KD was up until either last year. Or the year before, I can't quite remember. It might have been last year now, actually. Um, was basically a guy called Keith Keogh up in Stockport, which is Manchester in, in the north of England. And um, Keith's background is in is is in sort of making furniture, or it was in making furniture. And he'd set up KD uh, to build drums. And anyway, I drove up to to Warwick. I met up with Keith. And I took a couple of his drums aside to uh, to review, and I looked at them, and they, you know, they were pretty cool. And um, this was th this particular drum, and in fact, Keith was the first person that I'd come across at that point who um, built built drums out of segmented shells. Um, for those of you who haven't seen a segmented drum before. Um, they they're made kind of like Lego, um, it, bits of blocks of wood that are built together to form a shell. So, um, in fact, the guys at Bell Percussion uh, in London, uh, not not too far from here actually, have built um, a snare drum out of Lego, um, which I went into the shop a few months ago to see it, and and I think the boss had taken it home, so I missed it, and I haven't been back since. But uh, yeah, segmented shells. Um, you've got obviously ply shells, you've got uh, solid shells, and this is just another take on sort of you know, how you can build a shell. Um, I was quite impressed with Keith's work. Um, it, well, obviously, when I met him, and he's a nice guy, he's probably about my age as well. And um, and I got speaking to him um, soon after about making me a drum and, and how much it would cost and this and that. And uh, this drum is made out of purple hearts, which uh, I, apart from being a hardwood, um, I don't know much more about purple heart other than it's, well you can see, it's purple. And um, it's a very attractive wood in that sense because it doesn't look like anything else that I have. Um, and the, the um, we'll see the, the, the hardware whilst we're on the subject. The hardware uh, is black nickel, uh, although it's been sort of a bit scuffed up or covered in, uh, covered in glue, it might be actually. And the uh, all the, the fittings, are, uh, the, the, the lugs and uh, screws and stuff are, are brass. And it's got a brass and black um, nickel drum works strainer on it, and uh, the elastic band was optional, um, basically because the damn thing kept falling down. So uh, I think there's a reason why people have become uh, slightly reluctant to use the nickel drum works strainer on their drums these days, and that's uh, possibly possibly one of the reasons. But anyway. Um, 12 by 7 drum. I said uh, it, I'll do I'll do a close up of uh, the, the inside of the shell. It's got a I think it's a, a 45 degree uh, edge on it, um, and uh, it's 
it's a kind of a dark sounding drum. Um, the, these are sort of, uh, sort of you know, generic no name um, uh, strand wires on it, and uh, I, very, I very rarely ever mix brands, but uh, this came with the Evans um, 300 Hazy on the bottom, and I've got uh, the Ambassador on the top there. Uh, I really should actually change the head and, and give this poor little thing a birthday and uh, and clean it up because uh, it uh, it desperately needs it. In fact, I'll probably take it in the house with me and do it uh, at some point. But um, yeah, it's um, it took a while to get because um, Keith very graciously. I I can't remember how much I paid for it now, um, actually. To, to be honest, um, but Keith very graciously gave it to me at a discount. Um, but it also took about six, seven, eight months to get it. Um, but uh, you know, it's one of those things. Um, again, it's another one I would never sell. Um, I, I don't use it that often. I did go through uh, a point where I was using 12 inch snares quite a lot. Um, a, a lot of the reason was to keep uh, keep the volume down because uh, apparently I was too loud. Um, but um, I've always found that 12 inch drums uh, are quite good for that. Um, you can put some welly into them and still keep uh, some control on the volume. And um, I think because that's coming off, I will bin that now anyway. So. Uh, I need a new elastic band for my drum. Or alternatively, I just need a snare mechanism that's not going to fall apart on me when I hit the drum. But, uh, yeah. So I'll never get rid of it. It's a great drum. It doesn't see as much use as it probably should. Um, but I think uh, what I'll do, as I said, is I'll, I'll clean, clean it up. And um, I... Um, who knows? I may actually put it uh, put it on a display stand or something. It's a great piece of, you know, it, it's a great looking drum, uh, you know, even if I didn't play it. So, um, yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll I'll probably by the time you actually have seen this, uh, I will have cleaned it up, and then I'll uh, take I'll will take some photos, and uh, and maybe a bit of uh, sort of close up video for you to see. Um, how lovely this shell is. Um, you know, as I said, this is one of the first custom drums that I had uh, made for me, and um, you know, I'm really glad I did. It's a, it's a it's, it's, I can't say enough good things about this drum, really. Um, despite the fact that it's, uh, it, it has seen slightly better days at the moment, um, I will, I will get this cleaned up. And, uh, and as I said, by the time you actually watch this video in its entirety, I will hope that I will have got around to cleaning it up and changing the heads on it and things. But anyway, cheers for watching. Uh, I'll said I'll do the video, uh, a little photos and video and stuff, and I'll do a sound file. And um, yeah, enjoy. See you later. Okay, so this is the KD snare. I've now um, I took it all apart, I cleaned it up. Uh, it's got two new heads on it now. So uh, at the moment, it's got quite a, a quite a, a sort of loose, a looser tuning on the bottom head, and the top head's quite uh, quite um, quite tight. Although it's not completely cranked. Um, I'm kind of just playing around with this tension at the moment, so I may tighten up a little bit uh, at some point, but I thought I'd give it a go uh, as it is now. It's quite open, it's quite ringy. Uh, in fact, actually the first time I played this, uh, it, this is now a couple of weeks after I did that first bit, and um, uh, now I, this is the first time I've played it since I changed the heads. So, um, yeah, I'll give it a go. You can hear how it sounds, and then uh, I might uh, tighten the, the heads up a little bit so you can hear what uh, it sounds like at slightly higher tension.
Okay, so I've tuned the head up just a little bit, uh, probably a couple of turns um, on uh, each lug, so uh, this is how it sounds like now. <laughs> 